everyone, it's Sharonda from Paleo Waves, and today I'm going to be reviewing The Little Mermaid, which went to theaters this weekend. This film is directed by Rob Marshall, and it stars Haley Bailey, Jonah Howard King, Melissa McCarthy, Javier Bardem, as this film centers around a young mermaid who makes a deal with the sea wish to trade her beautiful voice for human land so she can discover the world above. So for those of you who are new to my channel, welcome, hello, so glad you came, I hope you stay. I'll tell you what I liked about the film, what I didn't like about the film, and should you pay your way to see The Little Mermaid in theaters this weekend? So I'm not going to lie to you guys, my excitement wasn't like over the charts about The Little Mermaid, because that's my childhood, y'all, that's what I grew up on, all right? The Little Mermaid sheets, okay? The Little Mermaid dolls, everything, the tents, the wallpaper, everything, that is my childhood, all right? So I was like, I don't know how I'm going to feel about this. But when I heard that Haley Bailey was cast as Ariel, I got excited about it. And I have to say that after watching this film twice, I was blown away about how much I actually really enjoyed The Little Mermaid. And that really rests upon Haley Bailey being cast as Ariel. She's just so fantastic. She really, she really captures the essence of the Ariel that I grew up with in an animated version. And she just gives, like, when I say she's giving princess energy, I was looking at Haley. I was like, this girl was born to be a princess. There's just something about the look that she has. She just looks sweet and innocent. And then when you hear her voice, she was everything. She ate the entire thing. When I watched that, watched that film the first time I was in the Dolby Theater, I was like, honey, the mic was on. The mic was on. When you listen to her perform part of your world, I felt like I was Haley's mama and I was crying because I was just like, look how beautiful this girl is and look how her voice sounds. Listen to how her voice sounds. She's amazing. I think she's perfect as Ariel. So much that honestly, I think that she should also do voice work because if I close my eyes and just listen to her voice as she's speaking, I really think that she would be great at animated roles. Disney, go ahead and get that money and do a Disney Plus show with Ariel. Let Haley, Haley get a couple more checks. All right. But there's a princess quality to her. And I think that helps when we see Ariel as this explorer, as this young woman who's conflicted because she wants to, you know, listen to her father who she loves. But she also wants to explore the world around her. She wants to not just be held into one place. And I think that really ties into the themes of, you know, wanting to understand the world that you live in wanting to understand things that you don't necessarily have a lot of information on. And that's why I do think that it's a movie that is very great for young audiences. But you know, these adults out here, they need to understand what it means to learn about different cultures, learn about things or people that make you uncomfortable because you don't quite know who they are or where they come from. And as we see this between the sea people and the land people as they're clashing because they've heard these stories or there's these things that have happened, um, that have been tragedies, but it feels intentional. I think it's a great film that talks about like understanding like what makes you different and understanding people who are different from you, who might not look like you, who might not grow up in the same cultures as you. And I really love that we get to explore this that in this film in The Little Mermaid. I think it's more abundantly clear to me because I'm an adult watching this than when I was a child when the animated version came out as well. Um, but also too, I did Jonah Howard King. I think that he looks like a good Eric. I did have some issues when it came to the song choices, but we'll get into that with the cons. But I think for the most part, Jonah does a really great job. And I think the chemistry between jo Jonah and Hallie, I think that is great. It's the same couple that you rooted for in the animated version, and you still root for them in this version as well. And to be honest, there is a lot of critiques about The Little Mermaid, the casting, because mer people can't be, can only be one color or one race, or you know, Eric doesn't look Eric enough. He wasn't giving Eric to me. I think that after watching this film, I think that that would actually put a lot of these naysayers and protesters to shame because while watching, I was like, I can't even believe that people were protesting this because these two do absolutely fantastic job at their roles with the song, with just their mannerisms, their acting. I, I just thought that they were so fantastic that it was almost absurd to me to think that for the past few years, that we have been listening to all of the trolls like being so angry about The Little Mermaid. But one thing that I will say I was very shocked about, and that was Melissa McCarthy's performance as Ursula. Now, I had other people in mind, and when they announced Melissa McCarthy, I was like, I don't know, girl, I don't know. But when um, Poor Unfortunate Souls came on, when I say, Melissa said, hey, let me tell y'all something, y'all gonna put some respect on my name, because I'm finna, I'm finna eat this down. And she did a really great job as Ursula. I love Ursula's look. She liked that. Ursula's kind of 
kind of misunderstood, okay? Ursula is like, you know, your rich auntie, you know, that people be talking about her behind her back because, like, why she's still single? Why she ain't got nobody? Ursula just misunderstood. And I do like some of the creative storyline differences that the writers took, you know, with Ursula's character, you know, some tweaks that they made to Ariel as well. I think that it makes the story work for the better. Um, and I thought that Melissa, she did a really great job. I love the look. I love the vibe. Also, too, um, the young lady who plays um, the character Vanessa, Jessica Alexander, she did a really fantastic job with the mannerisms. Baby, she said, I'm going to make this five minutes of screen time work, honey, because you are going to remember me. And I really, I really did like her. I thought that her character really stuck with me, even though she kind of came and went real quick. I was just like, okay, girl, you said you're going to make the most of your screen time. Also, too, Ariel's sisters, okay, she got some, she got some bad sisters, like, the whole family got baddies, I see you, Triton, I want to know what they mama look like, yeah, all them baddies, but I do want to give kudos to Sienna King, she was serving, I was like, honey, you can't be outshining Hallie, you can't be outshining Hallie for my mother, who know who this sister, I really liked her, there was just, like, a look, a vibe about her that I really felt, I thought she was great, um, I think Javier Bardem as Triton, I thought he was good. I just wish, like, he's in the movie, and I know, like, girl, this is Ariel's story. It's not Triton's story. But I just kind of wish he was utilized more because I really did love the father-daughter dynamic between Javier and Hallie. I thought that they really had great chemistry as father and daughter, and it just made me want to see even more of him. But even as we get to understand the storyline that changes with King Triton, I kind of wanted them to build that up a little bit more because I actually thought that that was a really fantastic change that actually made more sense than what we were introduced to in the animated version. Now, also too, I will say that I love Sebastian. Sebastian is the scene stiller, funny, just has the good lines. There's story things that change with Sebastian, which I thought was kind of weird because to have the V did portray Sebastian. I thought it was weird to make that change, but it is what it is. He was still funny, but we're going to talk about that accent when we get into some of the issues um, of the film. Um, Noma uh, dumas Winnie, who is a new character um, who plays uh, the queen, I thought that she was a good addition. I just love everything that she does. He's just, he's just always great. And it's nice to watch like the parent-child dynamic with Eric and his mom and with Ariel and her father it's nice to watch these dynamics of these young kids who just want to get out and explore the world who want to be different than their ancestors who want to change things who want to mend and blend cultures together and to kind of see their parents have this hesitance because they're very protective of their children they want to make sure that they're okay I liked actually being able to see that dynamic a little bit more especially with the addition of the queen in this film as well now I've been getting a lot of flack for this, and I'm not going to take the disrespect of one of the new songs, which is the Scuttlebutt. It's a bop. And I don't care what you guys say, all right? You can come for me in the comment sections. I don't care because it's on repeat all day, every day, all right? It's a good song. I just had to get that out there, okay? Because y'all are going to be like, Sharana, why are you going so hard for this song? But I just want to say that I really like the song. Now, there's so many things that I did love. Visual effects, that's going to kick me off into my cons. I'm still going to end on a pro. I felt like the effects were much better than what we were shown kind of in the first look. Um, in the trailer, everything looked really dark. It was kind of concerned because I was like, child, am I going to have to have some special lights so that I can barely see during the day? But I have to say, especially when you saw the sequence of them releasing Under the Sea, I thought that it actually looked pretty fantastic. It feels, it looks vibrant. It's colorful. It kind of reflects all of these, you know, you see the coral, you see the different um the different fishes I thought that it looked fantastic in certain parts but it almost felt like to me while watching I was like I wonder if they made these changes after people started complaining about it being too dark because they brightened up certain things especially under the sea which definitely needed to be brightened up but you still have these dull moments that happen there's kind of these dull moments like parts of the story where it's like mm, we can do a little bit more color here and um, it makes me just wonder, were some of these changes made to brighten certain scenes after people started complaining, or is this how it always looked? I do feel that there could have been a little bit more cohesion, cohesion and consistency of making sure that everything was bright and bold throughout the entire film. And especially, there's a third act. 
third act CGI thing. I feel like this is just any any Disney or comic book movie. There's always some wanky like thing that happens in the third act, and I couldn't see nothing. And I was just like, I mean, I can't see the person we're supposed to see. There's supposed to be this whole big thing that happens in the third act, and that didn't make make sense to me. And while I'm speaking about the third act, I will say for people who are taking their children to see this, some parts is a look like. My grown adult friends were next to me in the movie and they jumped a few times. And I think that I just err on the just err on caution about taking your little ones. I do think that some scenes will be a little bit scary for them because it is live action. That's all I'm gonna say. They still gonna get their time, get their life together, maybe take them for a bathroom break once we get to the third act. You know what's gonna happen. Just take them to the bathroom because don't nobody feel like having no conversations and having no kids like I can't sleep, can I sleep with you? Don't nobody wanna go through that. Um, now, Flounder is barely there. Justice for Flounder. Now, I didn't go back and rewatch the animated one because I really wanted to just watch this as it was his own. I didn't want to compare back and forth. But I was just like, did Flounder, was Flounder just never really there? I guess it makes sense because, like, Flounder can't be with Ariel because Flounder got to be in the sea so Flounder can breathe. But then there were other random things that they did with other characters like Scuttle. So I was like, well, if Scuttle can do this, then I'm going to let Flounder slide too. So it just didn't make sense to me on how Flounder was just barely there. Um, Also too, with the new songs, I like all of the songs except for Eric's song. I don't know if it was because, and I think this is what made me like lukewarm to Eric for most of the movie. Because after this song that they gave Eric, which the, the lyrics make sense of what Eric is saying. Jonah sounds good. But they filmed it like it was a 90s boy band. Like, my man was in a field at one point. Then he's sitting on a rock. Then he wet. And then he on the ship. I was like, y'all, what? I said, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? It doesn't make no sense. I didn't like it. And honestly, it had me side eye at Eric. Like, I was like, Ariel, stand up, girl. Like, this who you trying to be with? Like, no, girl. But that's just me. I I don't know. Y'all might like it. It is what it is. And the only other thing is I did feel like the pacing in the middle of the film, it got a little slow to me and then I needed them to speed it up again. Um, but other than that, I had a good time watching The Little Mermaid. I think it exceeded my expectations of what I thought we were going to get in this live action version of The Little Mermaid. I love the storyline changes. I think that it makes the characters feel more well-rounded, more whole, minus the few that I mentioned. I like the additions um, of some of the songs. Scuttlebutt, Bop, I don't care what nobody says. Hallie, Mike was on the entire time. And Melissa said, I'm sick of y'all just talking smack about me and y'all gonna respect me, okay? You gonna respect her after this film is Ursula because she did a really great job. Um, I'm very interested to see what people think about this film. I adore The Little Mermaid and I just, I can't say any more good things about it. I really think that audiences will enjoy what they see. I think those naysayers are gonna be shut up. All right, the haters just gonna feel bad because like y'all was dissing these people and they just, they killed it. So what I would tell you to do with you and your coins for the Little Mermaid, I would say you better go see it. You gonna get your life. How we finna just, baby, she gonna sing, you gonna be throwing your shoe at the screen like she didn't have to cut it up like that, all right? You're gonna laugh. You gonna cry. I did shed a, t- I shed a tear. Like, Hallie was my child and I was so proud of her. And I'm just happy that more kids seeing images of people who look like them, who look like the people in the world that they belong in. I think that it's necessary, it's essential, and it's not going to hurt anybody to actually see the world reflected on screen. So those are my thoughts on The Little Mermaid. As always, my name is Sharonda from Hero Waits. And if you like what you saw today, make sure you hit the like button, hit subscribe, share this video with your friends, and make sure you hit the notification bell. And I love you guys 3000. And until I see you again.